Thank you so much for everyone bringing the Vortex together for all of us. A question I have is, do you need to be in the receiving mode to do step five? That may be the best question that anyone has asked lately for this reason, because step five is really about having spent quite a bit of time in step one when you've been used to being in step three. So step five, the way we've been speaking, it is not being mad at yourself for being back in step one. And so it seems like the answer to that would be, no, you can't be in step five because your awareness of being in step one. But really the answer is yes, you must be in the receiving mode to be in step five because what step five is, step five is, you're gonna like this. So you're tuned in, tapped in, you're feeling really good, you're in the receiving mode and you're getting ideas and you're following the ideas. <sighs> and one of those ideas is pointing at a problem, a kind of step one-y problem. But you were in the receptive mode. You were tuned in, tapped in, turned on when your inner being guided you to that problem because the solution is so important along the way. If you got that, you're right out here on the leading edge with us. In other words, this is mastery of creation if you got that. If you didn't get that, it's okay. <laughs> so we'll say it again. Step one is, Contrast is causing me to ask for things. And in asking, there's often an awareness of what I don't want. And that awareness of what I don't want, if that's the strongest vibration I've got, knowing where I am and what I don't want, even though I've launched what I do want, and even though source and the universe and law of attraction are mixing it up and helping me, still, I can prevent myself from having that by beating the drum of what put it there. In other words, you do that all the time. It's easy to do sort of justifying why you want it by pointing out what's wrong about not having it. So you're more in step one than you are in step three under those conditions. And so you're not in the receptive mode. And so things aren't working out for you. And maybe your frustration is growing, or maybe you're asking stronger, deeper questions. And in any case, your vortex is growing. So a good thing is happening. And in any case, your inner being is happy. And so nothing's gone wrong. And in any case, it's going to turn out all right. So nothing's wrong, but you're still in step one. And right now you're in a holding pattern because you're not allowing yourself to be the receiver of what you've been asking for. So then you get distracted, you meditate, you tune in, you sleep in, you are nicer to yourself, you get feeling better, you hang around with fun people, you get in the flow, you're in the receptive mode and you're there for quite a while. You're in the receptive mode, which means ideas are flowing to you. Ideas are flowing to you and as the ideas are flowing, it's like your inner being led you right to a problem. Your inner being led you right into a situation where you witnessed something in your business that really matters to you that was going wrong. And your inner being led you right there because you're in the receptive mode. And it was a step one moment that your inner being led you to because you were in the receptive mode. You see what we're getting at? This is mastery of all of this, but you didn't get mad. You were glad. You didn't feel upset. You were so appreciative that you came to know that because you can't make good decisions if you don't have good information and you're making good decisions. And so, yeah, you gotta be in the receptive mode to be in step five. And when you are in step five, then step one does not bother you at all. Now you are like your inner being who knows you were born for contrast. You no longer condemn contrast. You no longer shy away from contrast. You no longer beat up on yourself when you're in the middle of contrast. You appreciate the contrast that gives you clarity. Don't you? Don't you appreciate the contrast that gives you clarity? So where is in the practical being Jerry for a minute, making this practical is he once spoke to me about like with patients, I take care of them, I'm a physician, a lot of people know that, is that when they're in step one, I don't worry about them. I trust in their well-being. I can stay in a higher vibration and calling them forth what the next step and is. And why is that? Is it because you've seen a lot of people that were in step one and things turned out really good? Or is it because you know that step one is the beginning of the process? Or is it because you know that you were all born to do step one, two, three, four, five? Why is it that you had enough experience to know that you don't need to worry about them when they're in step one? Yes. Yes. So yes, yes isn't yes, that yes. nice? Your inner being has had enough experience to know that step one not only isn't a problem, sometimes it's a clarifying situation, isn't it? Sometimes it's a catalyst to exactly what they want, isn't it? And why would it be different for you? 
well, this is what you were sneaky about. And you asked me, he's like, is there someplace else about it? And you asked me, do you feel that about your staff? And it kind of caught me off guard. I realized when there's a step one moment with the business and there's something that they're not following the procedure or something that's not going well, is that I get off. I lose the step five perspective. But here's what I heard today is that when I attract something I don't like and from a loved one or a situation, is that I don't need to worry about me being off. Because that same kind of joy and trust I have in other people's well-being, my son, my husband, our, our patients, our friends, my inner being sees me the same way. And that's just astonishing to feel that. To feel that when I slip up by tracking some behavior or event, you know, the, the, the being pulled over by the car or the bank account or whatever it is, the weather, whatever, the changes is that, yeah, I attracted something unwanted, undesirable, and my inner being, me, the true me, the physically focused me, this is really different. My inner being is fine. Like I have to take care of them. My inner being is fine. But the physically focused me is finally and increasingly not worried about me being a step one is a very interesting shift in perspective. You're living more and more in step five. Esther was having a meal with a really good friend a while back. And they had just been with a group of people that were three generations. So there were grandparents and parents and children all together, all having this wonderful time. And Esther said, because they'd been talking about life and processes and forward and future and they'd been beating the drum of all of that and they were both sitting there clearly and purely in the receptive mode and Esther said oh I just love thinking about these little kids and that we get to watch them move through life knowing what we know and as Esther was salivating over the deliciousness of getting to watch them have their life experience knowing that there's going to be plenty of step one and plenty of step two and plenty of step three but knowing the goodness of what she was going to get to witness and her really wise friend receptive mode friend said oh that must be how our inner beings feel about us and they both sat there with goosebumps all over them because it was the first time that Esther had ever viscerally, physically, even thought about what she must feel like to her inner being, what the physical part of you must feel like to that non-physical part of you, that we're all in this togetherness uh, is just the essential component that we're talking about here, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's such a short distance to rendezvous with something unwanted and as soon as you accept the premise that I don't have to blame myself or beat myself up, I just bounce right back. Let's, let's yeah. stop calling contrast unwanted. Let's do what a step five consciousness knows. Contrast is wanted. Otherwise, this magnificent Persian rug would be black. <laughs> it would look like that. Which do you like better, that or that? Show them. Shine it. Like that or that? You like that better or that better? Ooh. You know, the thing about a Persian rug is that there are so many different pieces of thread in it. And no matter what other fabric or wall color you bring to it, that is in there and it will reflect it back. That's contrast. That's variety. That's better. That's way better. You want contrast. The more contrast you have, the more options you have. The more contrast you have, the more ability you have to create the results that you want. You want contrast. Contrast is not a bad thing. It is the best thing. You are born into it because it is the creative clay of your world. And when you're in step five, you know that. When something doesn't go the way you want it, you say, Oh, good, something to focus on. Esther broke a whole etagere full of beautiful things that Jerry and Esther had gathered from all around the world. She was dusting and it fell off the thing and the top shelf fell on the second shelf fell on the third shelf fell on the fourth shelf. Everything came crashing down and Jerry came running from the other room and he said, don't move. And Esther standing there always in her bare feet with shards of glass in the floor and everything. And Esther looked up like, look what I've done. And Jerry said, oh, good, something to want.
<laughs> Something to want. More things to want. When the conscious happens, there's a physical focus that sometimes we get the, you know, the wobble and it's not the contrast is desirable but there's an emotion sometimes comes a little bit negative but that's what i'm getting at is that you just bounce, bounce well, let's talk about what the that. wobble yes. is though is the wobble because contrast is there or is the wobble there because within the contrast you're not stable right because you're observing something and desire i'm calling it a desire that that's so i'm like it's such a brief thing because i'm easier and easier feeling Oh, okay, that's not something no I planned what. or want, wanted, no but it's, it's good. I, but I actually do want this because it's clarifying. Like the analogy of if it's cold, it's just information. You just put a sweater on. It isn't only that you need it. It's that you want it. You want questions because you want answers. And your vortex is full of the answers that you want, but you've got to discover the questions before you're in the receptive mode of the answers. Mm -hmm. Never said that before. Yeah. Probably can't say it again. <laughs> That's really big. You have all kinds of answers that are in your vortex that you're not ready to receive until you ask some questions that make you ready for some answers. <sighs> so every renegade, every rascal, every person that gives you any trouble, kiss them full on the lips. <laughs> and say to them bless you for assisting in the becoming of me because I've come to become and unless I'm becoming I'm not happy I like becoming it's the most natural thing to me I got to become so bless this contrast and these rascals that bring it we came to be physical because I wanted contrast I wanted clarification I wanted the fun of new ideas yeah. new information there's no new ideas without some contrast it's got to be there like more, i more, chose more. to be here physically more 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 wow. more 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 of what more clarity more fun mm -hmm. more exhilaration more life more love more more appreciation more good feelings more goosebumps more 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 and more of all of the things that lead to that mm -hmm. yeah really good